this Ash Wednesday, as we remember the sacrifice of our Savior and the, the road that he took for us, and then opportunity for us to journey with him in this season. Those worshiping with us virtually, we are thankful that you are here as well. Uh, just kind of a, a beginning announcement, just for any clarification purposes. If you are worshiping with us virtually, you'll want to have ready your ashes as well as uh, your elements for communion. Uh, when it comes to the time of the service where we have the imposition of ashes and uh, the Lord's Supper, there's a, a couple different ways that you can receive and celebrate communion. If you prefer to have the sealed elements, those are available in the back. Hopefully you have that opportunity to choose that if you so desire. And then at the beginning of that time, we will offer the receiving of those elements uh, for communion. Then after that, we'll have everyone who would like to receive ashes to come forward. And if you haven't already had communion, you can receive communion by intinction at that time. So, and if you're not exactly sure, don't worry, we'll make sure that you'll be able to partake and celebrate with us. In this spirit of this time, as we enter this season, would you join me in prayer? Let's pray together. Lord, as we've come into this place, we pray that these minutes that follow will be a time where you move in power by your spirit to convict the heart and that we may come and empty ourselves of ourselves so that you can fill us. We're only able to do so by your grace and your power. And so we pray you move in power for your glory and that you will give us a greater awareness of the lengths and depths that you went to to bring us back to yourself. And so may we come in humility, repentance, dependence, love, and faith. May you move amidst your people that we may honor you, not just in this time, but in what follows. Come Holy Spirit. We pray this in the name of Christ. Amen. I invite you to join with me in our responsive call to worship. <clears throat> After the fire has raged and the flames have died away and grown cold, nothing remains but ashes. After the hot passion of sin, after the cold calculation of evil, all that remains is brokenness and ashes. After the zeal for living has ebbed away and life has run its course, there is nothing left but ashes. But ashes are not the end. Lent begins in ashes but it will not end in ashes. We begin in dust, but we shall end in resurrection glory. And so enter this season with confidence and with hope. Ashes are not the end. Let us stand and sing together just as I am.
be seated. Brothers, sisters, friends in Christ, every year at this time, we celebrate our redemption. And that is a, that is a weighty word. That's a word that we can't talk enough about that we cannot celebrate enough of our redemption. We celebrate it, and we celebrate it, and how it was accomplished through the death and through the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so Lent is a time to prepare for this greatest of celebrations. We take time to prepare for it because of its importance, because of its power, we also use this time to renew our life, our life in God through Christ. And so we begin this holy season by acknowledging our needs, our need for repentance, our need for the mercy of God, our need for the forgiveness of God, all of which is proclaimed in the gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so we invite you in the name of Christ, to observe a holy Lent. By self-examination, by confession, by prayer, by fasting, by works of love, by reading and meditating on the Word of God. And we're going to do that right now. We will start this season and this time meditating on the Word as we hear two passages, one from the old, one from the new, the first being Psalm 51, which we'll have an opportunity to sing in a little bit. Uh, one of the more familiar passages, especially this time of year. And I pray that this will not only be a reading to us, but we will make it our prayer as well. For the director of music, a psalm of David, when the prophet Nathan came to him after David had committed adultery with Bathsheba. Hear the word of the Lord. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So that you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. You desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O oh God and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. Then I will teach transgressors your ways so that sinners will turn back to you. Deliver me from the guilt of bloodshed, O God. You who are God, my Savior, and my tongue will sing of your righteousness. Open my lips, Lord, and my mouth will declare your praise. You do not delight in sacrifice, or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. My sacrifice, O oh God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. And from the New Testament, we hear the words of Paul proclaiming 
the ministry of reconciliation that has been accomplished through the sacrifice of our Savior Jesus Christ and how we not only proclaim it with our words, but will embody it in our lives in many different expressions. And so we remember the sacrifice of our Savior. We remember the cross. We remember who we are without him. And we remember what we are graced to be able to participate in with him. So hear this word of the Lord from 2 Corinthians 5, beginning in verse 20. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As God's co-workers, we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain, for he says, in the time of my favor, I heard you, and in the day of salvation, I helped you. I tell you, now is the time of God's favor. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way in great endurance, in troubles, hardships, and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments, and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights, and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience, and kindness, in the Holy Spirit, and in sincere love, in truthful speech, and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonor, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as imposters, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us continue in that spirit of confession and prayer as we stand and sing, Create Me a Clean Heart. Forgiveness for the wrong we have done, for the good we have not done, for the guilt that weighs heavily upon us. Forgive us for the brokenness that we have caused. Forgive us for the brokenness that lingers in our hearts. 
make us whole again. Amen. Our God knows that we are not what we were created to be. He knows that we are broken, but he does not abandon us to our brokenness. Instead, he has taken your brokenness, he has taken your pain, and he has made it his own. In the life, in the death, and in the resurrection of Christ, you are forgiven and made whole. Thanks be to God. Oh, I have you to be seated, but you were just beginning up again. We begin this journey to Easter with the sign of ashes. And the sign of ashes are a sign of our mortality, that we were dust and the dust we return. It's a sign of repentance throughout the scriptures, the Old Testament, the New, a sign of breaking and rending hearts. It's also a reminder that eternal life is a gracious gift. That apart from Christ and God, all it would be would be ashes. <clears throat> and so, hear these words of our Savior Jesus as he invites us. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. No one who comes to me will I cast out. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. As we come to the Lord's table, we remember on that night and meeting with his disciples in that upper room just hours before being betrayed and arrested, leading very soon after that to his death. As we begin these words of, of institution, again, I would encourage those who have chosen to receive communion with the sealed elements, we will be using those in just a moment. But let us remember the words of our Savior as well. On the night that our Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he blessed and broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. The body of Christ, broken for you, take and eat with thanksgiving. In the same way, after dinner, Jesus took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for the forgiveness of your sins. As often as you drink it, do it in remembrance of me. The blood of Christ shed for you. Take a drink. As often as we eat, bread and drink the cup, we proclaim the Lord's death and his resurrected life until he returns. As we prepare to receive the ashes of those who are receiving communion by intention, I just want to remind you, because you are invited forward, that you are receiving the grace of God. At this time, I would like to invite those who will be assisting with the elements to come forward.
and we invite you to come and receive the grace of God. Broken by sin, restored in Christ. Broken by sin, restored in Christ. Broken by sin, restored in Christ.
Before we pray, I want to ensure as everyone who wanted to receive ashes and communion been able to, is there anyone who would like to be brought to them in their seats? All right, well, let us pray together. Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to gather and to once again be in awe of what you did for us and what it accomplished. We thank you that though we were we were separated from you, we were dead in our sin, we were condemned, you came and you took our death and you gave us your life and you brought beauty from ashes. Spirit of the living God, come and fuse your life in your people that we may be those who walk humbly before you in faith and love and devotion that you may be glorified and the world will be in awe of the lengths that you've gone to to draw us back to yourself. We praise you with all of our being and we will do so for all of eternity. We pray this in the name of Christ, our glorious Savior and Lord. Amen. And amen. reconciled us to himself through his son. So may we follow his example through prayer and fasting. May we obey him with willing hearts and serve one another in holy love and do so through the grace of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. And now I want us to stand and to sing together when I survey the winner's cross. Wednesday service. 
And there's a reason for it, and I think you'll understand once we hear these words. In Psalm 103, beginning in verse 8, may this be the faith of our heart and the proclamation of our lives. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. The life of mortals is like grass. They flourish like a flower of the field. The wind blows over it and it is gone. And his place remembers it no more. But from everlasting to everlasting, the Lord's love is with those who fear him and his righteousness with their children's children and those who keep his covenant and remember to obey his precepts. The Lord has established his throne in heaven and his kingdom rules over all. Praise the Lord, you his angels, the mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word, Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you servants who do his will. Praise the Lord, all his works, everywhere in his dominion. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. And now, may the God of peace make you holy in every way and keep your whole being, body, mind, and spirit free from every fault at the coming of of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Go in his peace, journey with him to the cross and then to the empty tomb and proclaim to the world the wonders of Jesus Christ. Amen.